So Thursday, we like to talk about family, relationships, and all that. But it's actually most difficult to have that conversation when a man, his wife, three children, and 20 others died in an explosion, avoidable explosion, that happened in Kogi State. Now, this morning, many Nigerians are angry because, in fact, in Lagos, we are kind of used to this. It happens pretty often. But in this, this, in this case, is it particularly even more disturbing because reports I'm reading from Tribune is saying that there's a possibility that this tanker in particular is an NNPC um, mm -hmm. tanker. Yeah. If that's the case, it makes it even more painful because these are government-owned trucks. If we condemn the private sector for not maintaining their trucks, what happens when the government trucks themselves mm. are applying these roads unmaintained? Our focus this morning is to discuss and to express our displeasure to the Nigerian government on the far too many incidences of petrol tanker explosions across the country. I worry because every time I'm traveling and I have a trailer by my side, we, we, it's, it's a testimony every time you go and come back, uh, you're not among the statistics. Mm -hmm. Because I was reading and I couldn't help but cry. Yeah, you know, people, so there's a businessman, the entire family is wiped out. The entire family, all children, you know, it's just one son that is in boarding house that is alive. The other cleric, a Muslim popular cleric that has lost six of his children, hey. all the family gone. Oh my you know, God. so when we read stories like this, I, I saw yesterday, I just didn't want to read it because I knew when I read it, I'll get very emotional and, you know, we'll just get worried. And I know my husband will start shouting, don't travel again. But like, where is safe? Because this thing happens in Lagos. It happens everywhere. So I, I want to highlight what Daily Trust was saying. Daily mm. Trust said that Felele Lokoja mm. is a death zone. Mm. In 2007, December 26th, five people died in an accident there, fuel tanker. In March 9, 2010, this same Felele, 70 people died. Hey. In July 28, 2017, this same Felele, 25 people died. In November 2019, this same Felele, eight people died. In January 13, 20. 2020, this same road, two people died. We are losing lives on a daily basis, and Even it's not just in Lagos, yes, on the Bridge. Yes, I have so many records of accidents happening on this same Otedola Bridge that I, I pass every single day of my life. Anytime I mention Otedola Bridge, I'm always looking around. Good God, there's a tanker. I just slow down, let him go first, because I can't come and die because of tanker, uh, tanker car explosion. I think we already know what the problems are. Mm. We have said them so many times. Now it just even seems like, you know, just clean the dates on these reports and you mm. just keep the story. Right. It reoccurs. But the thing that is most heartbreaking, really, because I think I'm even past anger, is government's response. Oh. This is sad. We are sorry. We sympathize. Mm. We will put together a committee, a committee to make sure this does not happen. And then in another few months, it happens. And we have the same, we will put together a committee. Rhetoric same rhetoric you don't have people who are locked up for driving recklessly you do not have people who are supposed to be in charge of maintaining those um, trucks in jail for something people just lose their lives and then they are forgotten mm. life goes on mm. i have seen a truck in this lagos mm. where you could see a slice on the on the on the on the, on the, on the what they call that thing the, the, t the where the tank where the petrol is yeah and it was practically leaking mm -hmm. people were just slowing down trying to alert the driver mm. that you have a leak so God forbid you are, you are smoking and you mistakenly put a cigarette there, that's it. We have with us a spokesman for the Federal Road Safety Corps, Mr. Bisi Kazim. Now, Mr. Kazim, I have to ask this question because Tokwe just reeled out statistics from that fair lele, meaning that government officials all know how that area is prone to these kinds of accidents. You would think that because of this, you have personnel on ground to ensure free flow of traffic. What is your FRC doing to ensure that in that region especially, there is free flow of traffic? Well, uh, the issue here is that uh, uh, when the safety engineering department uh, went there to examine the exact problem with the issue, we found out that different issues, different problems. Like yesterday on was as a result of the brake failure on the part of the tanker driver, which and uh, eventually it lost control, and uh, there's no how it could do it than to uh, enter a dish, and from that dish there was a explosion. For me, as a Nigerian, I would think 
that when a tanker falls over like this, one of the first things uh, a regulatory body could do is get the plate number of the tanker, trace the owner of the truck, arrest him, put him in jail first, and then begin the investigation. For me, that sounds um, logical to do because when you keep having meetings and meetings, it's almost as if nothing is being done. So why isn't that a possible um, approach to at least finding who these people are? Uh, we're in that process of trying to prosecute. And in fact, we're working with insurance, we're working with uh, most of these uh, people of guns. We, the reason is that most of the time, like the driver that drove that vehicle yesterday, it's not alive, so even the prosecutor in the first place. Yeah, we, we lost it to, to that incident. Not the driver, the so, owner the of owner. the truck. The owner, the company, yeah, the yeah. transporting you see, company. I know there's, uh, in law, there's one thing that is called precarious liability. If, if you know what I mean, it means that even the owner of the vehicle could be liable. And we need to get to that level where we have a law passed. You know, it, it, you don't operate when you do not have an adequate law to operate with. You don't just do what you don't. There should be a law now to say that these people should be prosecuted and this power is given to FRS. Then you see us doing that. But as, as of today, our act does not permit us to take any offender who has caused, I mean, any owner whose vehicle is involved in a, in a crash to, 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 to court. You okay. The person who is liable after that particular time is the driver of that. that, oh, that uh, oh. Who is the driver that is maintaining the truck? Oh.